This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a horror movie called Moloch. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In a foggy forest is a small house where a young Beatrix feeds a mouse with food scraps inside a walk-in pantry. Suddenly, she hears heavy footsteps from the floor above, followed by screams. Frightened, Beatrix covers her ears until she notices blood dripping from the ceiling. The blood pours down the walls, so Beatrix hides under a shelf and covers her ears again. 30 years later, an adult Beatrix works on her laptop after sleeping with a co-worker named Edwin. As she's getting ready to pick up her daughter from school, Beatrix calls her mother, Elske, and learns that she's already driving her daughter, Hannah, home. Beatrix complains as she believes it's risky for her mother to drive, but Elske assures her they're fine. Soon, Beatrix arrives home, and Hannah happily greets her. As she's taking dinner to her father, Roll, Beatrix sees that her father is talking to the police officer, Hans. After the officers leave, Roll tells his daughter that they were asking if they'd seen the bog man, Misha, who's been digging holes nearby. That evening, Misha continues digging a hole but stops when he hears a whisper. Afraid, he turns around and sees a figure approaching him. By morning, the police find him dead. A research team gathers not far from the scene, led by Jonas. When he asks about the crime scene, his assistant, Sonia, explains that the police found the man dead, possibly due to a heart attack. Sonia then takes him to a tent they've set up to observe a mummified corpse they found buried in the soil. That evening, Beatrix wakes up to find her mother seizing in her bed. After calming her down, Beatrix sees Hannah up. As she takes her daughter back to bed, Beatrix sees her window open, so she closes it, only to spot a man standing outside their house. She puts Hannah to bed and checks again, but the man is gone. The following day, Beatrix finds Roll arguing with the research team but can't understand them as they don't speak Dutch. When Jonas checks in on them, she helps translate her father's complaint in English, noting that they saw someone outside their backyard in the middle of the night. They assume the man is part of their team, so Roll threatens the research team from stepping into their property again. Later, Beatrix takes her mother to the doctor, who thinks that Elske's condition might be due to unprocessed trauma, so she suggests undergoing therapy. Elske isn't happy about this, but Beatrix is open to it. When they arrive home, they find Roll showing Hannah the cameras he set up outside the house, which would take photos if it detects movements like a trespasser. At night, Beatrix is recording herself playing the violin when Elske knocks on her door to assure her that she's fine. She knows that her mother just doesn't like the idea of therapy, but Beatrix says okay nonetheless. Wanting to relax, Beatrix goes to the pub where she meets Jonas for drinks. She rants about her mother's habits, including collecting sugar packets from restaurants and serving them to guests. During this, she notices her other co-workers drinking at another table, including Edwin, who awkwardly just nods to her. On the way home, Beatrix recounts how she and her late husband, Neil, used to be in a band, and they brought Hannah along during tours. However, Neil suddenly died of a heart attack so she ended up back in town. She shares that people in the neighborhood think their family is cursed. Besides her husband dying, her grandmother was also killed when she was young, and the killer was never found. After her death, Rose started drinking while Elske started having her mysterious illness that the doctors still can't figure out. One day, Beatrix helps students prepare for the town's annual celebration, while Edwin directs the stage play. After the practice, Edwin invites her to his apartment again, but she decides to end their relationship. As Beatrix puts Hannah to bed that evening, the girl girl asks for bedtime stories. She adds that she wants her mother to keep reading her to sleep forever, even when she's older. Beatrix smiles at the thought. Afterward, Beatrix finds Roll outside, watching their backyard for intruders. She advises him to go back inside as it's freezing, but he insists. Beatrix returns to the house and, to her surprise, finds the same man from before in their kitchen. Radu apologizes to her as he drank some of their milk. Seeing a knife next to him, Beatrix slowly backs away then goes to Elske. However, Radu approaches them, crying. The two slowly go up their stairs as the man keeps apologizing, saying that someone is making him do this. He suddenly grabs Elske and pulls her down. He then wields his knife, but Beatrix slams his hand against the railings to make him let go. Before the women can crawl back up, Radu screams, making them freeze in horror. The sound wakes Hannah, so Beatrix quickly carries her daughter away while Elske takes the knife and threatens the man with it. Radu, however, forces her hands to direct the knife onto herself. Forcing her mouth open, the man pushes the knife inside until Roel hits him over the head. The police soon take Radu away while the family recuperates. The next day, Jonas visits them, and Elske serves him a bowl of sugar packets from different restaurants, like what 
Beatrix said. He admits that Radu was part of his team, though he'd known him to be non-violent. Remembering her grandmother's death, Beatrix asks Jonas how old Radu is, confirming that he'd been a teenager the day she was killed. Seeing her daughter still frightened about it, Beatrix asks Jonas to talk privately. In her room, she breaks down, so Jonas comforts her. Hearing their daughter's cries, Roll says she is back, so they should leave. But Elska claims he's going crazy again. As she's cleaning up, Elska suddenly collapses, so she's taken to the hospital, where she gets an MRI scan. During the scan, however, Elska presses the panic button, so they take her out immediately. Elska refuses more procedures, and Beatrix agrees since she keeps pressing the panic button before they can get a proper scan. While getting into their car, Beatrix notices one of Jonas' team members, Leonard, heading to the hospital. Curious, Beatrix follows him and finds him and Jonas visiting Radu, who's in intensive care. She sees Radu's son hugging his unconscious body, but the child suddenly turns to Beatrix as if sensing her presence there. Terrified, Beatrix leaves, but the boy follows her into the elevator. There, the boy suddenly repeats a foreign phrase and holds out his hand. Beatrix touches his hand, and the elevator suddenly loses power. While the emergency lights flicker, the boy starts muttering something that echoes. With a gasp, he snaps out of it and looks behind Beatrix. When the woman looks at the reflection in front of her, she sees something wispy behind her. Slowly, Beatrix moves to the side to get a better look, and realizes that the wisps are hair strands of a gaunt ghost behind her. Beatrix turns in shock, only for the ghost to disappear and the lights to return. The elevator finally opens, and the boy cries in the corner. Confused, Beatrix simply leaves and returns to her car. Quickly, Beatrix checks a translation app on her phone, discovering that what the boy said means she never died. Before she could process this, Beatrix sees Jonas and Leonard heading to their car, so she goes up to them. She asks if they discovered why Radu attacked them, but Jonas answers that Radu hasn't woken up yet. However, at their camp, the others shared that Radu was digging alone, away from the site. The next day, Beatrix meets with Jonas at the bar, as she requested. From there, she points him to Misha's father, Ton explaining that her son died after digging something up. She then urges Jonas to tell her what they're researching at the bog, so he shares that they found a woman's mummified body. Hearing this, she moves to speak to Ton, who recounts that his son somehow knew where to dig in the bog, as Misha was the one who first discovered the mummified body. Ton shares that men in his family are always sensitive to supernatural things, but Misha was special. Beatrix asks if someone told him where to dig, so Ton mentions the mythical Helen's Whispers, which talks about the legend of Feka. As they're driving back, Jonas asks who Helen is, so Beatrix shares that she's a story to scare kids from playing in the bog. She hates the story since her father claimed to have heard Helen's whispers near their home. Jonas finds it ridiculous, so she changes the topic and asks about the mummified woman. He refuses to say more to avoid getting her paranoid, but Beatrix points out that Radu attacked her family, so he shouldn't treat her like she's crazy. Jonas defends that her trauma might alter her perception, but Beatrix is offended and abruptly leaves his car. Worried, Jonas follows her, but a drunk Beatrix runs away. She laughs as he chases her, but when he catches up, Beatrix kisses him, and they get intimate on the field. At night, Jonas returns to their camp, and Sonya shows him how the mummified woman's throat was cut vertically. To his surprise, they also found four others from the holes that Radu dug up. Sonya notices that Leonard isn't feeling well, so she advises him to rest. Before they leave, Jonas asks Sonya to look up something. Meanwhile, Roll's motion-triggered camera catches something in the dark. In the morning, Roll shows the photos to Hans, insisting that the device wouldn't have taken the photos if there was nothing. However, Hans only sees gray smudges and thinks that Roll has become paranoid after the attack. Roll is convinced that Radu was only listening to someone's commands, but Hans points out that he was rambling just like this after his mother died. The day of the annual celebration arrives, and Beatrix is busy preparing for the kid's performance. Meanwhile, Sonya finally finds the legend of Feka, which is about an evil lord, Walter, and his wife, Helen. The couple lived in wealth while their people struggled with poverty. They had a servant named Feka, whom Walter got pregnant, angering his wife. As Sonya reads the legend, the school performance retells the same story. Helen believed that her husband was under Feka's spell. Thus, the girl was accused of witchcraft and thrown into a dungeon. Feka prayed for help, and the one who listened to her was Moloch, the god of child sacrifice. Moloch promised to help her, but warned that her vengeance would also be her prison. Moloch also demanded her unborn child as payment, and Feka accepted. Thus, she was given Moloch's mark on her forehead. As Beatrix watches the children's performance where Hannah portrays Feka, she finds Hannah's old drawing on the floor, which looks like the ghost from the hospital. Sonya continues that on Feka's trial, she freed herself and cut her throat vertically. This caused Helen's soul to be taken while Feka possessed her body, becoming the Lord's wife. 
During her reign, the town became more prosperous. Therefore, the town continues celebrating Feka as a beacon of light. People believe that Helen's spirit still roams the bog since then, seeking vengeance. Given how the mummified women also had their throats slit the same way, Yona starts to wonder about these stories. After the performance, Beatrix finds her daughter and asks her about the drawing. Hannah claims that she made it up, but Beatrix remains nervous. While driving home, they find Roll working on something in the forest, having missed his granddaughter's performance. Still, Roll continues setting up a wire with a bell attached to it. After dropping off Hannah at home, Beatrix visits Ton to ask for help. Believing that her daughter is also getting affected by the strange events, Ton thinks that, like his family, Beatrix and Hannah are also sensitive to vibrations around them. He tells her it's better to ignore what they sense, but sometimes these vibrations are warnings. Ton teaches her how to focus on the vibrations to translate them better. As she listens to him tapping, Beatrix falls into a trance and finds herself back at the night of her grandmother's death. As she's looking at a family photo, young Beatrix sees a reflection of her grandmother's body with her throat slit vertically. Beatrix snaps out of the trance and sees Ton troubled. Looking behind her, Beatrix sees that his fishes have suddenly died. Later that evening, Sonya finds Beatrix looking into their files at their camp. Hearing that Jonas isn't there, she asks Sonya about the mummified bodies they found, who were all women from different eras. Sonya confirms that this is true, and Beatrix assumes that the women were all related. Meanwhile, Leonard roams in the woods, triggering the bell that Roll placed. The older man tasers him before he can approach their house and ties his hands, but Roll hears whispers behind him. Soon, Beatrix returns home and tells her mother to start packing so they can leave. She tells her about the bodies found in the bog that were killed the same way Feka killed herself. She insists that someone sacrificed those women, like how they killed her grandmother. Outside, Roll searches the woods, hearing the bells around him. As he checks the darkness, Figures in white approach him. Roll shines a light on one of the women and cries upon seeing Elska among them. The women start whispering, and suddenly, the weeping Roll turns stoic. At the town parade, Sonya tells Jonas how Beatrix went to their camp. She shares that Beatrix said her family is in danger, making them wonder if someone is still sacrificing for Moloch. Just then, a group of masked people carries an effigy of Feka through the parade. Worried, Jonas leaves. Later, Beatrix and Elski find her father standing at their door with wide eyes. Afraid, Beatrix shields Hannah as Roll breaks the glass door to unlock it. Quickly, she removes the keys to prevent him from unlocking it, but they remember that the back door is open. While Elska checks the back door, Beatrix hides Hannah in the walk-in pantry. Suddenly, Roll crashes through the front door and grabs his wife. As he's about to stab her, Beatrix stops him but gets knocked down. Losing his knife, Roll chokes Elska instead. He screams, and the women in white around their house scream with him. Finally, Beatrix knocks her father out with a fire poker. When she checks, however, Elska is gone. Beatrix looks for her mother, but soon, Roll wakes up to Beatrix's gasp. He gets up and heads upstairs to see his daughter unconscious. Suddenly, Elske appears and puts a noose around his neck. Struggling through the rope, Roll sees his wife with white eyes just before he slips off the stairs. Meanwhile, Jonas navigates through the woods towards Beatrix's house when his foot gets caught in a bear trap. Soon, people with masks enter the house while Hannah hides. Beatrix wakes up, bound and gagged on the bed. To her surprise, her mother's at the foot of the bed, surrounded by masked people. Elske assures her not to worry, as she picks up a razor and slits her own throat. Beatrix's cries are muffled as she watches her mother bleed out on the floor. Suddenly, the candles around them are snuffed out. A hand grabs the bed, and Feka emerges with her marked forehead. As Feka approaches Beatrix, the woman starts seizing. Eventually, Jonas arrives at the house, limping. He finds Roll's body over the stairs before reaching the bedroom. Passing Elska's body, he wakes Beatrix and frees her from her bindings. Afterward, they get Hannah from the walk-in pantry. Weeks later, Beatrix and Hannah meet Jonas, who offers them to move into his new property's guest house so they can escape their tragic home. However, Beatrix insists on having a stable environment for Hannah, even sharing that she sold her violin in favor of a more stable career. She assures him that they're getting through well, but Jonas believes that she should seek professional help. Despite his worries, Beatrix shrugs them off and repeats that they're fine. She then gets up to leave and advises him that it's sometimes best to leave things be. Before leaving, Beatrix pockets a sugar packet from their table. Noticing this, Jonas realizes something is wrong, but only watches the mother and daughter leave. That evening, Beatrix has Hannah reading a bedtime story instead. During this, the ghost of the real Beatrix watches them, along with the other spirits who fell victim to the curse. However, she can't do anything but watch her daughter with Feka, who is raising Hannah to be her new vessel in the future. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.